These are the things that you need to know to keep your skin clear if you struggle with acne or blemish prone skin. And these are just the essentials that I go over with people when they first come in for a consultation or a treatment, or sometimes even just meeting somebody in the checkout stand and they have acne and they find out I'm an acne specialist and they'll start asking me questions. And these are the basic, the basic stuff that I tell everyone. I tell you, I had a, a beautiful young woman who I would go and get my juice from every morning on the way to work. And she started talking to me, found out I was an acne therapist. And I just started asking her, you know, well, what do you put on your face? What do you do? Do you do this or that? And she made a couple minor changes. And within a few weeks of me going back there, she was so happy because she didn't even have to change her skincare routine very much. <laughs> she did a little bit and I'll tell you what it was. But she, um, just by following a couple simple things that I gave her to do, she was able to get her skin back in order again. So let's go ahead and get started today. So when I meet somebody who's struggling with breakouts and blemishes, one of the very first things I do is talk a little bit about diet. And when I'm looking at diet, I'm not looking at usually making huge changes to your diet. Usually it's just changing a couple small things at first. And then if we find that we're just not getting clear, we're still having issues, not getting that clarity we want, then we might take a deeper dive into diet and nutrition. But generally, I'd say 90% of the people we work with, there's just a couple of simple things that you need to do or foods to avoid if you are having blemishes. First of all, if you're taking a multivitamin, most likely that multivitamin contains biotin and iodine. And those are two triggers. They get into the hair follicle and really irritate the hair follicle and really contribute to acne. And so when I say go through your vitamins and make sure there's no biotin or iodine, you also have to go through your drink mixes, your pre and post workout mixes, Here's a big one, and I've cleared up a lot of people just by getting rid of this one thing, especially teenagers. Their moms send them to, you know, after school tennis program or football or whatever with cliff bars. Cliff bars contain biotin, and especially for teens and male teens, it's just gonna make them break out. So looking for biotin in your bars, your vitamins, and your drinks. Make sure there's no biotin or iodine. Now, when you go to the grocery store and you're buying salt, do not buy iodized salt. Um, I really love Redmond's salt, but you can get a sea salt. You can get any salt that is non-iodized. In fact, when you see that little blue canister with the little girl with the umbrella, Morton's salt, there's on the container, it'll say iodized, and there'll be one right next to it that says non-iodized. So if you just wanna go the cheapest route, you can just get that non-iodized salt. So a lot of times when people go out to eat, um, or they, they like to eat a lot of fast food, and they're thinking it's the grease that's making them break out when really it's the iodized salt because the french fries, everything has a lot of iodized salt in it, and that's what's causing that breakout and really irritating that follicle and causing those breakouts. The other food that I make people avoid is peanuts. And I know peanuts are delicious. I love peanuts, I love peanut butter. Uh, but fun story here, maybe not so fun for her, but one of my acne therapists was clear. She originally started coming to me for acne, got so excited about what we did for her skin that she went to school and became an esthetician and was working with me as an acne therapist. And all of a sudden she started getting all this inflammation and breakouts going on. And we're like racking our heads, what is going on? Cause we knew she was diligent. She's doing her routines. And what it turned out is that she and her husband were doing a peanut butter diet. <laughs> and that peanut butter diet because of the androgens in the peanuts caused her to have a lot of inflamed breakouts. So cutting out peanuts and peanut butter is one of those essential things. Now, oftentimes I have to have clients cut out dairy, especially milk, ice cream. The dairy issue for some people is really hard. 
So I will often say to you guys, you know, you can start out, you can do your first month and keep eating your dairy and see what happens. But if we're not getting you clear after those four to six weeks, we're probably going to ask you to go off dairy for a month or two and see what happens. And it's always just amazing, especially with male athletes, teenage male athletes. They really have this idea in their head that they need milk. Milk is just so good for them. They don't want to cut it out. We get started, we're going a month, we're going on to two months, and there's still all this inflammation. And so we say, okay, please, please, just for the next 30 days, no milk at all. And it's amazing, but all their breakouts go away. That inflammation is gone. They just get out of that inflammation cycle. So milk can be a real trigger for some people. And if you don't want to cut it out right away, cut out these other things and then see if you get clear. If you don't, then bite the bullet and cut that milk out of your diet. The next thing that I often, well, I deal with this with all ages from teens to adults. Um, I had one client um, started with me when he was in high school and we got him completely clear. He goes off to college in a college town that's just notorious, and maybe it's this way for all college towns, I don't know, but there was a lot of marijuana going on there. So he comes back to me after a couple months of school, I think he was the end of his first quarter, and he's just a broken out mess. And luckily he felt like he could, we could be honest with each other and we could laugh about it, but it was the marijuana. Marijuana uh, really triggers that testosterone, has a lot of androgen, stuff going on and really caused a lot of breakout. In fact, another client that we used to have come into the studio would come in every morning and I didn't realize what it was at first, but I thought one day I came in and I said, I think that somebody ran over a skunk. It smells in here. And then my esthetician said, no, actually this is my client. And I just had to talk with her because on the way here, she's smoking a lot of marijuana in her car and then you can smell it. And we finally figured out that was her trigger because she hadn't felt comfortable really telling us that she did that, but yet she kept coming every two weeks for treatments and we were still seeing so much inflammation and not getting clear. So sometimes it comes down to really deciding what thing you need. I've had a few clients, I've had a client even quit the program because they were not willing to give up the marijuana and we couldn't get them clear without them getting off of it. We could get so clear clearer, but we weren't going to get them completely clear until they went off. Now, is this true for everybody? Does everybody, is everybody going to break out from marijuana? Is everybody going to break out with peanuts uh, or by its dry time? No, not everybody will, but those who are prone to acne, and usually if you've got that genetic acne, you know, either your mom or your dad had it growing up. It started with you pretty young. If you have that genetic gene for acne, if you do those things, 99% uh, of the time, those are going to cause you to really break out. So let's see, a couple other things for you to think about with acne have to do with lifestyle. One is this stress and a lack of sleep will cause breakouts. Um, we had a client who we were working with, we got them fairly clear, but we just couldn't get over to completely clear. And what we discovered was that he was working a night shift. And we've since come to talk to other acne therapists and Dr. Fulton has backed us up on this as well, is that when you are working a night shift, it is very hard to get your skin clear. It just messes up those circadian rhythms and it's very hard to get clear. We do our best and um, we'll do our best to keep you clear because sometimes that's what you need to do. You need to work a night shift, but just knowing that there are, you know, be understanding that you might not get 100% clear. We can get you clearer, but you're not gonna maybe get 100% clear. Now for those night owls, those of you, sometimes it starts pretty young where you just don't sleep at night. You like to stay up and play games, watch TV or engage your mind. And you're just used to having that nice quiet time in the middle of the night where you can just zone out and do your thing. Well, the problem with that is, is that if you don't get that solid eight hours of sleep, then you are going to have breakouts. It just leads to acne, unfortunately. Um, so sleep is really important and doing things that reduce your stress, whatever that's going to be for you, whether it's um, getting involved with art, reading, walking, yoga, 
running, bike riding, spending time with friends, um, all of those things that help to de-stress yourself. Um, having a pet, um, having a dog, we know that's really good for reducing the stress and increasing those good hormones that we want in the body. So reducing stress. The next thing I wanna to talk to you about is um, what you're using to wash your clothing and your sheets. So it's really important that you use a, a detergent that's free and clear. But then the other thing that's really important is that you do not use any kind of fabric softener or dryer sheets. I've had clients that I've been working with <laughs> and working and working for weeks and weeks and they keep telling me, no, I'm not using any dryer sheets. And then finally they'll say, well, I do, but I just use the natural ones from the health food store. Guess what? Those are still bad. They still put a coating of wax and oil on your, <laughs> wax actually, on your fabrics that causes breakouts on the body and even on the face from where you're sleeping. So if you're wanting to soften your clothes or um, reduce that static, go buy those wool dryer balls. You get a set of three wool dryer balls from Target. Put those in your dryer and they take care of the problem and they will not cause you to break out. So I can see I have a question here. Don't wanna move on too far without answering questions. Krista says, is there something you can do if you can can't get eight hours every night. Um, not really. I mean, Jess, Kristen, you're just gonna have to know that you are probably gonna always suffer with a little bit of breakouts going on. Getting that, I mean, and it depends on your age. I mean, as we age, sometimes we need less. Everybody's a little, so six to eight, that's what I would say. Can you get six hours of sleep every night and, and really work on that? I know it's not easy. Um, and you might have just other situations that make it so you can't get that much, but make sure that you know you're not eating chocolate or anything with caffeine or having coffee or teas after 12 o'clock. If you're having trouble getting to sleep, don't do that after lunchtime. But I mean, there's all kinds of ideas that you can do to help yourself to be able to sleep better. Um, so we could talk about that um, a little bit if we need to. Bella, any recommendations for clearing closed comedones? I've tried tretinoin, mandelic acid, and I'm allergic to salicylic acid. Hopefully we can get to that today, but I wanna get through our basics here of what people need to know. So you've got closed comedones and everything that I'm telling you here is important. Maybe this is already basic information that you already know, but if not, all of these things are important for you to know. And a lot of times those closed comedones, especially if they just stay there and then eventually come up and maybe turn into one or two pustules here or there as they come out, a lot of times that's gluten or dairy. And so it's gonna be really important for you to get off of those two things, the wheat and the dairy. And I know that's not popular to, for me to give you that information. Any recommendations for clearing clothes? Okay, we got that and Kristen said thank you. Okay, next thing on my list here, okay. This is really a good one. 20 years ago, when I started my acne practice, it was really popular. Everybody was putting coconut oil on their face and people were putting on TikTok. Well, TikTok wasn't there then. So Facebook, Instagram, people were saying, I cured my acne with coconut oil. <laughs> and everyone's putting coconut oil on, the, on their face. And guess what? While there might be a few people who maybe they had a compromised barrier, their skin was really dry, so they put coconut oil on and they clear up. There are a few people like that, but most people using coconut oil on their face are going to experience acne. And we got a lot of acne clients over the last 20 years just because they were following that fad of putting coconut oil on their face. Coconut oil causes serious breakouts. Now the latest fad, and this is kind of a resurgence, we saw this a little bit a while ago and it's coming back again, and that's putting tallow on the face. The same problem with tallow. Tallow is the wrong kind of acids, of fatty acids in there, and that will cause breakouts as well. And I know it's fun to be able to use these really holistic and natural things, but um, you know, any of those, you know, tallow and coconut are amongst the worst, but even shea butter, if it's not refined, 
will cause breakouts. Um, the beautiful thing about shea butter is when it's refined properly, it's actually anti-inflammatory and actually can help calm down some a monthly hormonal type breakouts. But um, most shea butter out there on the market is just not refined enough to be able to use be used on the skin without causing breakouts. So we've got coconut oil, oil, tallow, um, nut oils. Any kind of nut oils are generally a no-no. Avoid those. Seed oils are better. Um, certain ingredients, and you can find these on my website. If you go to the Learn Center and then you find the Acne Center, you can go to, I think it's um, maybe lesson four, and it talks about um, ingredients that cause acne. And we have a short list of the things that absolutely 100% cause acne. And then we have another list that if the ingredient's not properly formulated or properly processed, it will cause acne. But in that top list of those absolute no-nos, you will get some good idea of things to avoid. One of them would be like Meristol Meristate, Meristic Meristate, or Isopropyl Meristate. Isopropyl Meristate, you see that a lot in makeups and stuff because it gives you this kind of glowy finish. Um, but for people who are acne prone, that's just going to cause all kinds of acne cosmetica for you and be very not good for your skin. So here we go. We've covered kind of those lifestyle diet things to generally avoid if you are seeing blemishes and you're blemish prone. Now what I want to do, let's see somebody put a link. Oh, Kylie put the link in there for you guys. Don't go there right now. Don't go to the Learn Center right now because you'll lose me. <laughs> Our blog does not um, our video does not follow us right now to the blog. We're working on fixing that, but if you go to the blog, you'll lose us. You'll have to come back to artofskincare.com and then you'll find us here again. So um, next thing is that when people start to break out, and often a mom will do this, your kid is starting to break out, and the first thing you do is you go to the drugstore, Target or something, and you buy an acne cleanser. And the problem with that is that oftentimes people try to treat acne with a harsh cleanser and it just doesn't work. When we're clearing acne, we find that we use actually a very gentle cleanser for the most part, but you know, depending on how oily their skin is, sometimes we'll have a little stronger cleanser, but for the most part, pretty gentle cleansers and then we're using a treatment serum. So when you're looking for a cleanser, look for cleansers that aren't full of scrubbing granules or acids or, um, or benzoyl peroxide. If your acne therapist or even one of our acne therapists from here tell you to use a cleanser with a scrub in it or BPO, then do that, of course. You know, we're individually treating people and individual conditions and everybody's different. But for the most part, I'd say 85, 90% of our clients, we're using a gentle cleanser and then we're treating your skin with a treatment serum. So when we talk about treatment serums, we're talking, in general, we're talking about an acid serum. Because what happens with acne is we have the buildup of skin cells on the surface closing over the pores because people with acne tend to produce cells faster than everybody else. And we find that we need to exfoliate those off in order to keep the skin breathing well. Well, there's certain acids you can use for certain types of blemishes. Now, for um, those of you who have those closed comedones, oftentimes those are tricky. And those generally, when you're looking at acids, generally your acid is going to be a glycolic acid that will work best for that. But some people, sometimes we even combine glycolic and mandelic acid to work with that kind of skin. But for the most part, when we're working with our beginning acne clients, we're choosing a mandelic acid. Mandelic originally came from almonds. Mandelic is antibacterial, antifungal, anti-inflammatory, and brightening. So it works really well for blemish prone skin, especially if you have breakouts in the follicles or um, inflamed breakouts, you're gonna do really well with a mandelic serum. Here's an example of a mandelic serum that we have here from Face Reality. This is their new packaging. And mandelic serums have to have an L in the front. So when you're looking at your ingredient deck of whatever mandelic serum, 
serum you're using. I had a client recently I was working with who using the Mandelic serum from Ordinary. The problem is it needs to have an L in the front. It needs to say L dot Mandelic. That's a chirally correct form of Mandelic and that's the only form of Mandelic that's going to be antibacterial and antifungal. So you want to be careful when you're choosing your Mandelic acid that you get one that says that L Mandelic on there. So, um, so we talked about glycolic, we hit on mandelic. The other acid you see a ton of out there, usually at the drug stores, this is what they're all treating acne with is salicylic acid. Salicylic acid can be fine, it's antibacterial and it's anti-inflammatory, so it helps reduce redness. The problem is salicylic acid is also very drying. So if you have a mixture kind of acne going on, you've got some blackheads mixed with your blemishes, um, salicylic acid has that tendency to just harden and dry the skin down and those blackheads get glued in and stuck, <laughs> which we hate because we can't get it out of the skin. So um, generally we reserve salicylic acid for those people who are more prone to redness, maybe with rosacea, with some little bumps and you know rosacea that has a tendency to get some little pimples here and there. That's who we're going to use that salicylic acid with. So those are your basically your three choices when we're treating acne and what you're going to see around the most. And our very favorite for at Artist Skin Care is the mandelic acid. When we started this 20 years ago, there were only one or two companies even selling anything with mandelic acid in it. Dr. Fulton was one of those. Um, and now a lot of different lines are selling mandelic acid. So that's why you've got to be extra careful now to get that L in the front. Also, mandelic acids now come in different pHs and different strengths. So depending on your skin sensitivity, most our clients are on an 8%, but occasionally you're going to have somebody with a really sensitive skin or a younger person, and you're going to want to put them on a 1% or a 5%. And then when it comes to treating the body or the back, that's when you're going to want to jump up to an 11 or 15% when you're treating the body skin with mandelic acid. So there's a key ingredient for you in a serum. Um, next topic, the next kind of a treatment serum that we use or treatment that we use with acne is benzoyl peroxide. And face reality, this is my perfect segue because face reality has really been pioneering um, benzoyl peroxide. Many of you know that benzoyl peroxide can be very irritating and very drying. So we have to start very slowly at a very low percent and work our way up to being able to leave it on all night or use it every day so that we don't have too much dryness. Now there's this balancing act that goes on because if we dry your skin out a little bit, it's actually going to speed up the healing and you will heal faster. If um, that's why we're always just pushing the skin a little bit. And the talk that I always give to my teenagers with acne is that it's kind of typical that guys will clear up faster than girls. Because what happens is guys don't care if they're kind of dry and peely. They just keep putting it on and that clears them up really quickly. The gals want to put on makeup. And then when you put makeup on peeling skin, you know, that just looks horrible. And so then they go off their acne med and they're not really consistent with it. And consistency is key with your acne med. In general, we only use this at nighttime. We have some little tricks up our sleeve that we can do if you're getting a little extra dryness. There are some things that you can put under your acne med to help with that. But acne med needs to be put on the entire blemish prone area, even if you don't have active blemishes at the moment, because this is preventative as well as treating what's happening right now on the skin. Another fun fact for you guys is that icing really helps to drive your, uh, your acne med deeper into the skin. So icing the skin with an ice globe before putting on your treatment, whether it's the mandelic acid or your acne med, is going to really help drive it in deeper. It's also going to help reduce inflammation and heal the skin faster. Now, let's talk about what makes this special. Face Reality just released the Advanced Care um, Acne Med, and I'm excited about it. We are all so excited about it, and everyone who's tried it is really liking it. What's happening here is that most acne meds 
Um, um, benzoyl peroxide, when it comes from the lab, is in a powdered formula. When you mix it up like it's mixed in traditional acne med formulations or benzoyl peroxide formulations, it feels kind of gritty or chalky. And that can be extra drying on the skin and it can affect the deliverability and it affects um, how evenly you can get it on the skin. It tends to travel too much when it's chalky like that, has a lot of problems. So here we come onto the scene, <laughs> riding the white horse. Face Reality is now using a micronized powder instead of the regular formulation of benzoyl peroxide. So that micronized powder is distributes more evenly over the skin. It's not all dry is not as drying and because it's micronized it's penetrating be deeper into those pores to actually disperse and kill that bacteria so we're super in love with the new acne med from face reality really if anybody here has tried it yet you can comment on here and let us know how you like it because we're super super excited about that now there's some things that you can put underneath your acne med or even under your Mandelic serum um, to keep your skin moist because it's really important when you have acne to not have a compromised skin barrier. When your skin barrier is compromised, that means it's red, it's irritated, it's dry, it's flaky. And you know, I said a few minutes ago, we actually, it's okay to be a little dry. And I still stand by that. It's okay to be a little bit dry for a few weeks as your skin acclimates to the acne med but we don't want to have chronically dry skin we don't want it so dry that it's cracking and if you're someone with darker skin type you don't want your skin really to be flaking because that's when you're going to cause some hyperpigmentation in those areas and so what we do to remedy that with our acne med or with our mandelic serums is we put a gel hydrator underneath a gel hydrator helps put water and moisture into the skin, and it's really great to use one that has a lot of anti-inflammatories and calming properties to it. And that's one of the cool things about the new Acne Med is they put hyaluronic acid in this one, and they also put Beezable in there, which is a wonderful calming um, anti-inflammatory ingredient to help balance out that action in the benzoyl peroxide. So there's some other things that we like to use around here. I'll show you our three favorites. Bye bye, this top seller, Face Reality Hydro Balance Gel. Hydro Balance Gel goes underneath your acne med or you can put it under your Mandelic Serum and you can even put it on again after you put on your Mandelic Serum once you let it dry. And that kind of creates this sandwich. It's called, kind of, it's called the Hydro Balance Sandwich where you're putting a gel on, your treatment serum, your acid serum, and then let it dry and then put another layer of that gel on and then moisturizer and sunscreen. And it really helps protect your skin from that transepidermal water loss so that we're keeping your barrier intact. At nighttime, you don't want to do the sandwiching, but you do want to put, well, you could listen to your esthetician because there's times when we do have you sandwich with hydrobalance at night, especially if you're using Mandelic at night and Acne Med at night. So you can do the same thing at night with your Mandelic serum. You put on your hydrobalance, your Mandelic serum, and then another coat of hydrobalance, let it dry, and then you're putting on your acne med. But a lot of people just use acne med at night and that's when you're putting on your hydrobalance and then putting the acne med on top. Now for some people, especially if you're a little older or more sensitive skin, hydrobalance is not enough moisture. And that's when we pull in some other, some bigger guns. So Michelle Corley's Ultimate Hydration Gel. This is so plumping and hydrating that me with my 60 year old skin, I love this stuff. This is like instant plumping water goodness for your skin. You can use this underneath your acne med for that really dry skin type and it really helps. Now, if you're one of those people that is prone to getting um, post-inflammatory arrhythmia, which we call PIE, or post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, which is PIH, um, those are the dark spots that you get after a blemish has gone away that takes a long time to go away. And if you're prone to getting those, there's a couple things here I'm going to show you that you should be incorporating into your skincare routine because they're going to help prevent 
those dark spots and help prevent and help heal those dark spots faster so your PIE doesn't turn into PIH. It doesn't go from red to brown. It just heals. With PIE, when you still see that redness under the skin, sometimes there's six to nine months after a blemish has gone away, that's because there's still blood flow to that area because there's still a lot of healing going on. So there's a couple things that we like to do that for that. One is that you can use Rhonda Allison's Vital Repair Gel in place of your Hydra Balance or your Ultimate Hydration. Vital Repair Gel can be used as your water-based hydrator and this has really wonderful growth factors in there. They're going to help speed up the healing of your skin. The other thing that we like to do, and you'll see us doing this more and more, is using the Daily Skin Clarifier from Glymed. Just putting this on a blemish, especially if you're one that just gets your blemishes immediately turn red, just putting this on your blemish at night, the next morning it's better. It's less red. This um, serum really helps with healing, anti-inflammatory, calming the skin. We mix this with our Mandelic Serum. So if you were doing that Hydra Balance Sandwich, which you might try instead if you're prone to those spots, is mix a pump of this with a pump of your Mandelic Serum and then put it on. And same thing at night. You can put this on and then put your Acne Med on top of it or you can mix it with your Mandelic at night as well. Uh, one of our um, sweet people here um, that works here, Madison, she gets some hormonal breakouts in this area. And she was telling us the other day, she felt one coming on in the middle of the night. She stumbles out of bed, finds this on the counter, puts it on that spot, and the next morning it's almost gone. It's just the redness is much calmer, so much better. And she's just feeling like, She's very, very fair. So when she gets a blemish, those spots are really dark. And this is just doing the trick for her, really calming that down, getting that inflammation out of there. So there's going to be less scarring, less PIE, and less PIH. Okay, so there's our things for that. We touched on mandelic acid. And I know some of you guys who are out there have maybe used the face reality mandelic acid and felt like, ooh, it's too strong for me. What you might want to try is the Neogenesis Mandelic Acid because even though they are both an 8%, Neogenesis has a different pH with their Mandelic Serum. So their Mandelic Serum is the one that we usually recommend for people who have really sensitive skin and cannot handle the face reality Mandelic Acid. So I just wanted to throw a plug out there for that great, great product. Spot treating. Everybody needs a little spot treatment, right? So our favorite spot treatment is from Glymed. This is their mattifying sulfur mask. And yeah, once a week you could put it on all over, but the by far the most way this is used, the most popular way to use this is to get a little bit out and cover a blemish with it at night and leave it on all night. This is another one of those miracle things that just takes that inflammation down. You could put on the skin clarifying, the daily skin clarifier, let it dry, and then put a spot of this on top, and you will be amazed what it does. When we first brought this in, we sold out of it in two days <laughs> because it's so popular, and everybody loves it so much. And you get so much. It's such a great value because you get so much in the container. So when it comes to spot treating, this is amazing. If you are allergic to sulfur, then you need to reach out to us. We have like Bion Green Tea Clay Poultice is another excellent spot treatment that doesn't have the sulfur in it if you have a sulfur allergy. Okay, so we hit on pretty much everything. In the beginning, I did talk about cleansing and choosing more gentle cleansers. So I wanted to talk a little bit about probably some of our most popular cleansers. Ultra Gentle from Face Reality. This is our top selling cleanser. This is the cleanser I recommend that moms pick up for their kids. Very gentle. Um, it's really going to help restore that um, skin barrier. They also have the brand new one. I didn't pull it over here, but there's a creamy one as well. So if you're really dry, you can get their creamy cleanser. Rinse is completely clean, beautiful, or the ultra gentle. Those are our most gentle, two of our most gentle cleansers for when we um, want to be able to do a nice 
skincare routine and not over dry people out. When you have a little oilier skin, then I do have from another favorite is from Glymed. It's the Idyllic Cleanser with 3% mandelic acid. So that mandelic acid is going to give you some extra brightening, antibacterial support, um, and brightening, antibacterial, and antifungal support. So if you've got fungal acne going on, this can be a really good help for you. This is my husband. He doesn't have fungal acne, but this is his favorite cleanser, and we keep it in the shower. And I need to make a video for you guys because it's really funny if I take this out of the shower, and then he's in there, and to hear him say, Gina, <laughs> where's my cleanser? <laughs> he really loves it. Then if you have really oily skin, I love this purifying cleanser. This one's with salicylic acid because remember I said that salicylic acid is that more drying acid. So the salicylic acid in this is really fabulous for oily skin or inflamed breakouts, but it's still very gentle. Glymed does just an amazing job of pH balancing their acids so that they do not disrupt your skin barrier. Whether, they're use, whether you use their glycolic cleanser or their salicylic cleanser, it leaves your barrier intact. And I don't know how they do it, but it's fantastic and I love it. So I see here I have a few more questions. So I am going to pop down here. Um, Kristen says, what do you suggest icing with? So we sell some ice globes on our website. Um, those are very nice. Um, you can get a Dixie cup and fill it with water. And you can freeze Dixie cups of water and use that to ice your face. Um, we actually, I'm not supposed to tell people, but I can't help it. We have a new ice globe coming in that you can keep in your refrigerator that and it has a little stand and it's going to be really amazing but it's probably not going to be here for another month or so so get your dixie cups out for now or you can see on my website there's ice pops and you can fill up an ice pop and keep that in your freezer and ice with that sometimes people use ice cubes but you probably when you're doing an ice cube you're going to want to use a little paper towel to keep it off your fingers and and use it that way all right you guys do i have any more questions we, any more questions about blemishes, what causes blemishes, what are some of the key things to look for when you're treating your acne? Um, if not, let's dive into the question about the closed comedones. So we're not getting any other questions, so let's dive into closed comedones. So closed comedones, if, if we're talking about the same thing, it looks like little pebbles under the skin and we call it maturation arrest acne and these people this is the most tricky kind of acne to treat and sometimes when you're just looking at someone you won't even know they have acne you really can't hardly see it but then you go like this and you pull their skin taut and you see all these little bumps under the skin these little pebbles all over underneath the skin so as i mentioned before number one is that you got to cut out the dairy and you're probably going to have to cut out the gluten as well definitely no peanut butter for you and the next thing is that you have to ex increase the exfoliation with that skin type so when we are talking about closed comedones there's two types of that maturation arrest one is more prone to in, go inflamed and one is more prone to go toward the blackhead side. So what I mean by that is when we start exfoliating that skin, if it kind of opens up and then you start to see a blackhead and you squeeze it out and this blackhead comes out of there, that's one that's prone to not be inflamed. When you have are doing your exfoliation and everything and all of a sudden you're seeing inflamed red ones or occasionally here and there they're turning very red, swelling, or you're getting some pus with it, that is somebody with maturation arrest that's prone to inflammation. If you're that one prone to that inflammation, that's you've got to cut out the dairy, you've got to cut out the peanuts, and you've got to cut out anything that causes inflammation in the body. Look for anti-inflammatory diets but we treat those a little bit differently. So that kind of um, closed comedones, in general, we're using a scrub to treat that kind of skin, and sometimes we'll use a scrub that doesn't have any acids in it, just a nice antioxidant scrub, like the one from Face Reality, 
or we might choose a mandelic scrub. If we're finding we're still needing more exfoliation, we can choose a little stronger scrub or a scrub that has a little bit of acids in there to help boost that exfoliation. The next thing is we oftentimes during the daytime will be layering some acids. So we usually start off with using the glycolic and we'll work up in strength. We might start with 5%, then go up to a 10%. And then if we're still seeing it not getting clear, we're probably gonna have you layer where you're putting on your mandelic acid, let it dry, that, or your glycolic acid, let it dry, and then putting mandelic on top of it. And sometimes that does the trick for people. The other thing is retinol at night. And um, using that retinol at night is going to help with clearing out the gooey stuff that's stuck in the pores. So the acids are gonna help take off that, the skin cells that are building up over the top, and then your retinol is gonna sink down in there and help to disrupt that sticky oil that's in the pore, the gunk, so that that can come out and come free. So those in general, those are the, where that's where we start when we have closed comedones. Um, where it can get tricky is, um, you know, some people clear up pretty quickly with that, with this kind of a protocol, but you often need to have an acne coach. And that's when you're gonna to want to enroll in our acne coaching program. And that's where we can coach you and work with you because we're just gonna gradually keep stepping up that exfoliation until we see a difference in the skin. If you live anywhere near a face reality, um, esthetician, you can go in and have peels. You can have peels every two or three weeks with the face reality peels and that will really help to clear that out. But guess what? It's just going to keep coming right back without the peels. So we've really got to get to work on figuring out what your triggers are and getting you on a little stronger routine. We want it to be so strong that we're uncovering all this, but we don't want it to be so strong that we're causing any in irritation and inflammation and damaging your skin barrier. So that's why it's really important to work with an experienced acne specialist and they'll really help you get the most out of that whole experience. You know, if you can't get in for peels, one of our favorite peels is that is clinical peel system. You could do the is clinical peel system. You do a peel every other night for 30 days and what you would do is top your peel, you put on step one, then put on step two, then you would put on Rhonda Allison's Salicylic A serum, and that um, will help to really dislodge and pull that stuff up out of the skin. Okay, got a couple questions here. Joseph, hi, you mentioned oily skin and purifying cleanser by Glymed. Would this replace the Orgade Cleansing Oil Deep Cleanse? This has lavender scent and it's irritating your eyes. Oh, that's too bad. I love the smell of that. But yeah, but it's irritating your eyes. So an oil cleanse is a great first cleanse, Joseph. So we use that first on our face on dry skin and just avoid the eye area. Get around the other areas of the skin, draw on dry skin, then get your hands wet, massage it into emulsify it and loosen that up and then rinse it off and do a second cleanse, especially with oily skin. You've got to do a second cleanse. And then yes, I think you would really like that purifying cleanser from Glymed. You would like the Glymed Idyllic Cleanser. Probably, I actually would probably start you with this one because I know you and your, your skin type. I would start with this Idyllic Cleanser as your second cleanse. And this has that 3% mandelic acid, so it's gonna be brightening going to stimulate collagen, feels really wonderful on the skin, but that would be a good second cleanse for you. And then of course, you know, when you use up your Orgade cleansing oil, if you don't like it, it's still bothering you, even with the way I've told you to use it, don't keep using it. <laughs> don't buy it again. Reach out to us, Joseph. We'll help you find a different thing to use for your first cleanse. And, um, but try this one for your second cleanse. Okay. Kelly, recommendations to calm sensitized skin and new blemishes, red spots for fair skin. They react to the skin script glycolic and retinol pad solution. Oh yeah. Yeah, glycolic retinol pad solution not be good for sensitive skin, unfortunately. So very fair, sensitive skin. This is what you want to pick up right here. 
daily skin clarifier. It's kind of a not the best name because when you think clarifier, that sounds like it's going to do clarifying, like maybe something with acid or something, but it's not. This is all about anti-redness, healing, um, repairing your skin barrier. This would be a really good thing to add into your routine. Okay. Kelly says, at first it seemed to help calm my skin, but after using it a few times, it seemed to really flare my acne prone and sensitive skin. Yeah, it's probably just with messing with your skin barrier too much. Um, glycoretinol pads can be really nice, but most people can't use those every day. In fact, most people, I would say the majority of people use those once, maybe twice a week, because it's really consider considered a peel pad. Now, I know there are people, and it says on the bottle the directions, you can use it every day or even twice a day, and believe it or not, I have clients who use that stuff twice a day. Their skin can handle it, but, but the rest of us, <laughs> most of us use that once or twice a week. So repairing your skin barrier, definitely look at the daily skin clarifier from Glymed and you'll you'll never want to be without that especially with fair skin because you're going to be more prone to that redness that P, um, post inflammatory arrhythmia and this is the remedy for you for that there's also um, if your skin's really whacked in the barrier there's a few different barrier creams from Glymed that would be really helpful for you the comfort cream with aloe vera or the vitamin E cream I don't know if we have the vitamin E cream in yet, but that comfort cream um, with uh, aloe vera, that would be a really nice one to use as well while you're rebuilding your skin barrier. Kelly says, thank you. Just added that to my cart. Would the Is Clinical Acne Peel System be too strong for sensitive skin? No. Um, I have, we just finished a peel month um, just a, a few months ago. March, we did a peel month where we had all these people join me in a Facebook group and we had all different skin types doing this peel and everybody did really well and many of them were afraid to do a peel, they're really sensitive and they were so happy they did it because they had such great results. So if you're more sensitive though, what you're going to want to do is just do that system for the first seven days, that every other day do the peel system. And if you, everything's going fine, your skin's just loving it, then you can add your retinol over the top after that. And you might not want to do that every time after that, but maybe every other time you do the peel, add that retinol um, over the top. And um, it's a great peel system. Just, just really good. Occasionally we'll get somebody who can't do it every other night and then they just do it twice, once or twice a week but that's pretty rare and you're already using some kind of acne things and stuff so I think you're going to be just fine with it. Now while doing a peel you're not going to want on the day that you're peeling if you simulate a little flakiness you're not going to want to use your mandelic acid on your skin or if you're using a glycolic acid or some kind of an acid serum you're probably not going to want to use that on the day um, right after you've done your peel so you really have to pay attention to your skin listen to what it's saying and um, take it a little more easy during that time while you're doing a lot of exfoliation okie dokie you guys i think we covered it i got everybody's questions this has been so much fun i love talking about acne it's one of my first loves and where i started in this industry was with treating acne clients and it's really near and dear to my heart because I love it when I hear stories about kids that go to their first dance. They're a senior and they haven't gone to any dances, but we get their skin clear and now they're going to dances and they're more confident. And, and I love that for all of us. I like everybody to feel really good in their skin and getting their skin mostly clear or all the way clear really makes a big difference for people. So it's awesome. All right, you guys, have a wonderful day, and we will see you all again next week. Bye-bye.